your child is learning their ABCs, making the alphabet out of Play-Doh or modeling clay is a great activity to help them learn. It's fun and easy. I'll show you how. <laughs> to make our Play-Doh alphabet, you need Play-Doh and some tools. You can buy Play-Doh tools at a toy store or you can use things lying around the house. You need a smooth surface to work on, a hard rolling tool like a can or a jar, a plastic knife to cut with, and then you can use whatever objects you find around your house that might make an interesting texture or shape in your Play-Doh. Let's start with blue and make a letter A. Using both of my hands to apply even pressure, I'm gonna roll the Play-Doh out into a rope. Once it gets as long as I'd like it, I'm gonna trim off the end, here and here. Fold this like that, trim off this, and there's our A. For B, let's try something a little different. We're gonna roll our dough out flat using the side of our jar. Flipping it over as you go, so that you get a nice and even pancake. Now I'm gonna use my can to cut out two circles. Put them in the middle like this. And then from the rest of my pancake, I'm gonna cut out a long line like this and set it along the sides of my circles. Now to make it look more like a B, I'll use my bottle cap to cut out the center of each. Hey, bottle cap starts with B. And there we have our blue B. C is next. To make the C, I'm going to do another rope with purple. Rolling it out, nice and even. Trim off one end. And there's a C. But it's not that interesting, so I'm gonna use my knife to add little lines. C. Now to make the D, I'm gonna flip over my C and take some more of my rope I just made and put it on the end. To make it more interesting, I'm gonna add some dots with the back of my pencil. D for dots. D. For E, I'm gonna use purple again. And roll it out flat. Then I'm gonna use my knife to cut two equal strips. And I'll trim up the ends to make them neat. Now I put one here and cut the other into three parts. There's your E. Take away the bottom and you have your F. For G, let's use green. I'll make a nice long rope again. Curve it up. Put the end in, like that, and there's your G. For H, let's use our green to roll out a nice big pancake. And this time I wanna add some texture, so I'm gonna use one of my cans to roll ridges along it. Then using my knife, I'm gonna cut a rectangle. Then I'll cut out the top and the bottom, and there's our H. For I, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Now I'm gonna roll up each little piece and make them into a ball. start to form my letter I. 
and there's an eye. The cool thing about the little balls is you can easily rearrange them. To your next letter, J. Now K. So for K, I'm going to make a thicker rope than I've made before. Using my knife, I'll cut almost halfway down there and cut through the other side too. Flip it this way. Open up the legs and there's our K. For L, let's do another flat piece. So first I'll make my long rope. Then I'm gonna roll down with my jar, smoothing it out as I go. Trim off the end, cut a short piece, then a longer piece. L for longer. Put them both together, and there's our L. I'm gonna use a chopstick to add lines. Line starts with L. Okay, M, M, M. Let's start with a mound, like the letter M for mound, and roll it into almost like a triangle until it starts to look like a little bit of a mountain. Now we're gonna trim off the sides. Cut down the middle. And there's our M and all its beautiful mountains. Next up is N. Let's stretch out a piece of rope, nice and long. Just make an N very simply. Like that. To make our O, I'll use orange. And I'll roll it into the biggest pancake yet. I'll use my largest can to cut out a circle. Then I'll use my bottle cap to cut out the center. There's my O. For P, I'll cut a long strip from my leftover pancake and put it there. For Q, Put a little strip in right there. There's our cue. For R, I'll cut the back of our circle off. We'll add a strip back in here and a little leg there. And there's our R. For S, I'm going to use green again and do something a little bit special. I'm gonna roll out a rope, but make it thin at one end, and a little bit thicker at the other. And this will help you remember your S, because it looks like a snake. For my T, I'm gonna use the green again, roll out another rope, Trim the ends. And use my forks, tines, to put a little print in it. Or add texture, which also starts with T. All right, we're winding down. For you, let's take two long ropes and twist them together. Now I'm twisting them up. Turn them up like that, up like the U. And there's our U. Now our last letters are kind of similar. So we're going to do them in a special way. 
Once again, we'll roll out a big pancake. This one happens to be pink. I'm gonna cut four equal length strips. First, let's make our V. There's our V. Then we add two more. There's our W. Now we take those two and flip them over. There's our X. And take one away. We have our Y. For our final letter, we use our strips again shape a Z. But let's make this Z something that kids can remember by giving it a little something extra. Let's give it stripes like a zebra. Z for zebra. And there we have it. That's our alphabet. Try making alphabet letters out of Play-Doh with your kids. Not only will they have fun, the hands-on activity will help them learn and remember their ABCs. Show me all the cool letters you make at home by hashtagging Mother Goose Club on social media. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so type in comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. For a long time, scientists have been baffled by the smallness of the atom. Hey, I'm Jesse. I have three boys, Diego, Zion, and Kingston. I know that reading is important. That's why I encourage them to do it as much as possible. One way to do that is by placing books all over the house. I'll show you how. I love cooking and sometimes my boys follow me into the kitchen and sometimes they're helpful and sometimes they're not. So I got to find ways to keep them occupied so I can cook. How do I do that? Bam! A stack of books right next to me. I get to cook dinner and I'm happy. They get to read their books and they're happy and dinner gets done. So then after the water stirs a little bit, we put it on the chicken and then we dance a little bit around the kitchen. A little bit on the kitchen. <laughs> awesome. What about yours, Kingston? A bear. A bear? That's cool. This one's got cool colors in it. Here's the deal. The more kids see books, the better they feel about them. It's all about familiarity. And if you place books all around the house, they'll become familiar fast. Putting a basket of books in the bathroom is one of the best ways to squeeze in more reading time. You can even get some waterproof bath books. Show your kids that you like to pick up books wherever you are, and they'll learn to do the same. This one's a no-brainer. You gotta have books next to the bed. It makes it so much easier to grab them at bedtime. You can get fancy containers, but for me, a good old shoe box works just fine because it bit my fingers so. When reading becomes a part of the routine, books become an important part of kids' lives. My kids love to wake me and my wife up super early, especially on the weekends. So we told them they had to read a book before they can come in. And that just got us 10 extra minutes of shut-eye. Don't forget to keep books in the car. It's a great way to squeeze in some extra learning, whether you're going on a long trip to grandma's house or just a quick trip to the store. Let's say I have a ton of laundry to fold. Well, I'll put a stack of books next to me, and if Diego's hanging out with me, I'll have him read a book, and when I'm done folding all this laundry, I'll sit down with him and we'll read a book together. Sometimes your kid will bring you a book at a random time. And let's face it, as parents, life gets busy. But you know, once in a while, just stop what you're doing, drop to the floor, and read with them. There you go. Books everywhere means reading everywhere, and that's a good thing. Mother Goose Club wants to know how you boost book time at your place. So share pictures and videos by hashtagging them Mother Goose Club. Prefer to type your comments? Let us know what's on your mind below. 
and don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Until next time, keep stacking those books. See ya. And sometimes these little guys follow in here. Ugh. Books become an important part of kids' lives. Zion, you know you weren't supposed to be up here. My kids love to wake up. <clears throat> Ugh. Here's a secret weapon. Our kids love to wake our. We're almost there, Zion. How many times are you gonna keep on doing this? My kids love to wake. Jeez, Louise. Until next time, keep those stack. It's this mic in front of me is making me nervous. That was a. You're so good. Maybe they're And until next time, it's a great, a great, or a quick grocery run to. Ugh. 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 My brain just stopped. Yes. Yeah. I can't read. Just look at the pictures. Is one of the best ways to. Ugh. Mother Goose Club wants to know how you boost, boost how you boost. Wow, that's gonna be a weird one. Boost. Does that, does that sound funny or is it just me? My Latino accents coming in really strong there. Hashtag videos and pictures. Ugh. Share pictures and videos by hashtagging Mother Goose Club. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> <laughs>